Johnson, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jeremy Nabinet, Chicago, Illinois. Tim Talley, Goldston, North Carolina. And here we are looking at uh, hole number one here again for this second group of players. And we did see the odds continue to adjust as things went along there. You see these golfers in Abinet, Tally, Johnson, their odds continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter as the first three continue to wrap up the front 18. And we're gonna see them step up here on hole number one as they prepare for their, uh, for their 18, looking to beat Alessi at his minus one. And certainly just like the other group, ace is very possible here about 30% of the time. One of the most aceable holes on the course. So you want to see him get off to a good start here. Oh, wow. A little too much juice. Well, we saw the first three golfers in the last round. All of them come up short of those rocks at the front. Have to push through. Get yep. that next shot, a difficult approach. There you go. First. Oh, oh Brian is not going to be Brian. happy with that. Brian Johnson, not going to be happy with that. And you know what? This is the talk going into this course. You can see the disappointment in himself, and he does wear his emotions on his sleeve. We've seen it before, but he just will not accept that from himself. And this course has always been an issue for him for some reason or another. Uh, off to a bad start there with the three in the early going. See, I think the hat selection here. Tim Talley. This, this might be an edge for Tim. I mean, that looks like a good putt. Did he get it? Oh, wow. Well, you know what? He's got to tap in too. This this hole has caused trouble today yeah. for these putters for one reason or another. Our first threesome today. Also, by the way. I love that. Love that play. Don't pick have to bend up. over to, no. to pick up the ball in the hole. That's got to be worth something. No, no need to waste energy. No need to risk injury, throwing backs out, hurting knees. That's None of it. that. Pick up the ball, continue to move on. Pace of play as well. That's it. Very important here. Our long shot, Jeremy Nabinet, misses Just out to the left. Off but the still rock there. Good uh, we did not see an ace on this hole today. Nope. Typically speaking, the second highest likelihood of an ace on the entire course, and we did not see one on hole one. And then we get to hole two here coming up, uh, where its uh, likelihood of an ace is pretty much non existent <laughs> at this point uh, with this big 180 degree turn that we talked about earlier on. But the most important thing here, Zach, if you don't hit it hard enough, it comes back to you. So you got to hit yes. it hard enough to get it up towards the hole. Uh, but Brian Johnson, very disappointing start there with that with that bogey on one. And live odds there over on Bet365. Rick Alessi plus 125 now. A big fave. And Tim, who, as I mentioned previously, is looking to tally as many aces as possible. The second favorite to win today's event here now, plus 500 on the live odds market. Um, as we head over to hole number two and Tim stepping up first. The putting Patriot, Team USA all the way. <laughs> Tim Talley representing the U.S. across the world in global competitions. We're going to need a recap or an update at some point here on the, the nicknames we've learned or uncovered throughout today's broadcast. Well, gets it right up there. Yep. Solid putt. Very Solid good putt. putt. Good start for Tim right now. I know it's... You know, we'll, we'll wait till this goes in. We don't want the commentator jinx one yeah. more time, but par par, nothing to be disappointed about about that. Rick sitting in the clubhouse, reading through his phone messages from family, telling him about the jerk on the broadcasting crew who mushed him earlier in the round. Oh, that one is going to be. Ooh. Oh, it comes back around. And he, it's he not got as lucky. difficult as I thought it might might be based on the original position that it was heading it looked like it was going to get stuck behind that rock in some capacity he's going to have a relatively clean look especially as a right-handed putter at this hole oh it's that one a little left. bit all right well he's in for three there Nabinet. He was the longest odds to come out as the outright winner of today's event. And that's not going to help him there, unfortunately. Brian Johnson will want to clean up that early bogey. Cannot afford to start bogey bogey here. And that should get out to the hole there. Solid putt from approach. Brian. Little bit left on that one. What would you set the odds out here today, Rob, of... Uh, 
a putter throw from Brian? Uh, I mean, <laughs> listen, I like Brian Johnson a lot. I know commentators are supposed to stay impartial, but when I was out in Myrtle Beach, he showed me the ropes at a lot of these courses, the shots. I got to walk the courses with him. So I have somewhat of a rooting interest for Brian Johnson. I don't want to see a putter throw because that would mean <laughs> that he did something bad. Yeah. But for pure entertainment purposes, you can never go wrong with a putter throw. <laughs> yes, that's a, that's what I'm saying as I'm looking at this. You know, I, I hope it goes well for these guys. I don't want to see the crumble. I don't want to see the Greg Norman situation. No, I don't like that. But if it John happens. John Vandeveld, you know, <laughs> poor guy. Just, I'd like to see someone win playing their best golf. You know what? I feel like for those uh, who are watching and tuning into this event for the first time or tuning into a World Putting League stream broadcast, for the first time, they're going to be looking at this leaderboard and thinking, wow, I'm seeing minus one. Otherwise, I'm seeing evens and, and plus scores on the card. I feel like I could do this. Rob, can you just explain a little bit about the fact that it's not as easy as people may think? The first time I went out and played one of these courses, I shot over 50. And I consider myself to be a, a, at least a decent putter. I golf enough to do that. And the reality is... You got to get in a ton of reps on these courses and the margins are just so fine. It, it's so much more challenging than it looks, especially you do not you do not see due to the nature of the carpet and the color and the shadows that are on the course. You don't really see the break in all of these putts. Yeah, it, it's really hard. And this course, especially relative to the others on the North Myrtle, Myrtle Beach circuit are so much more challenging here. Now, Brian. These all the way off with his feet off the court, off the uh, course here. You notice that? Yeah, they'll all be looking to play this bank shot, and Brian nailed it. Knocks it there down. Hole in ones helps with the aces. There you go. And he's like, you see the emotion, right? Like the fist bump, walking off the course. He's back in it. He knows it. And that's you know, not it, it's aceable, but it's not an easy ace. 18 yep. 18.8 percent of the time. Live hole in one tracker currently sitting at six for those of you who bet the over 13 and a half. I, I mean, I guess either way, this is going to be a little bit of a sweat. Yeah, there's there's some work to do here. Yeah, one way or the other. There's some work to do here. If Tim can ace Get this save. one. Ooh, interesting. Wow. He, he got the bounce off the right side and then again off the rock on the left. And in what looked like it could be a very difficult position for him, he gets a little bit of a fortunate. Oh, wow. See, I, I, I'm really wondering whether or not the tee shot was a miss hit or if that was a direct line where he was trying to kind of lay it up to the hole. Right. Because I've only ever seen putters try to hit off the yellow brick at the back. Right. So I'm not sure there, but he stepped up really quickly for that second putt. And I don't think you typically see deuce putts from there all too often. But that's very disappointing for Tim, who's going to drop to one over with Jeremy and Abinett. Uh, one over as well. And Brian Johnson, after that early bogey, back to even par. And as you see here, Alessi still remains in the lead. Brian Johnson, even par. Tim Tally there at plus one. And Jeremy and Nabinet there at plus one as well. Still all three golfers remaining ahead of Kent and Gary, who were in the earlier group. The first 18 that was played, that they said there at plus two and plus three at the bottom of the leaderboard right now. I'm interested in where your thoughts are on Brian and his ability to kind of take over here. We see him have these ups and downs. You see him wear his emotions on his sleeves. That sleeve, that can play a factor one way or the other, but you see him bounce back there. He knows he's right back in this thing. How does kind of the rest of this round play out for him? See, it's really weird because if you look at Brian Johnson's scores here at the Aloha, they only range between like 34 and 36. He's right. always in that range. However, I do consider him to be a streaky putter. So while he's always ending up in that same bracket of final scores, you do send, tend to see him go on runs where he gets back-to-back -back aces, puts a lot of good holes together, but also has the tendency of putting some negative streaks together. Again, you'll see it. Of all the putters in the, in the tournament today, he's very emotional. You see the fist pumps. You yeah. see the putter throws. You see the shaking of the head. He, he lives hole by hole. And when it's going well, it can go really well. When it's going poorly, it can go really poorly. Well, through three holes, he's got one bogey and one ace on his card, as well as a par there. And he is currently sitting plus 400 on our live leaderboard over at Bet365. 
He's going to take a little bit of a direct Ooh, one and just little on the snaking inside. putt there. Again, another aceable one here. It's a front door putt, but you got to get the speed perfect on this one. Got to get it perfect. I love the emotional play out of Brian. You you can see it. You know how he's feeling. As long as he stays even keeled for his own his own sake inside his head, I think things will be okay for him. But I, another direct approach. He plays it off the bank there. It's Tim Talley, and he's going to have a pretty easy putt here to knock it in for two. You can see as soon as they miss the front of the hole, though, they know it's just not meant to be type of situation. Typically speaking, you're going to see those go into the front door. Laminate. And that's just long. Outside, and he's not going to have enough runway to come back there. Enough power to run back. All three will be a little disappointed here. Whenever you have a hole that you know you have a chance of acing and you don't, it doesn't feel great because yeah. you feel like you can do it every time. But in reality, the expectation would be that more often than not, all three putters do not make an ace on this. So no harm, no foul, so to speak. They all had what looked like pretty good putts, pretty good approaches. You just don't walk away with with that ace and no one's really able to break free but at the same time no one has now dropped off from the front group and you see unless he's still in the lead but no real change here between johnson tally and, and abinet who all feel like they still have a chance to win this one as we go over to five yeah and with the format of the tournament here right now we got our top three that are going to go into a sudden death playoff here so there's going to be a lot of movement up and down the leaderboard it's still very much with within reason that someone like Kent Cranford is in play if we see some bad scores here. So it'll be important for these people in the second group to get things going. And hole number five here, again, another hole that can be aceable. It's uphill the entire way, breaks from right to left. And as you can see from the graphic, there's different ways to play this shot. You can play kind of that front breaking right into the cup type of shot or the one with the bank off the back. Be interesting to see when we saw the first group, different ways to play this hole. How will these guys in the second group decide to play this one well and for those of you wondering whether you're on the hammer hq or the world putting league.com however you're choosing to consume this here today these guys are going to have very interesting approaches to this because the top three players go to a sudden death the winner of that is the winner of today's round advancing automatically to event number three which would be the final round so they're still in competition uh, even as it is you're not necessarily just chasing unless you are you'd like to be able to one be the one to take that lead away from today but the top three advancing to a sudden death tim tally just missed an ace there tapped in four two as we're going to see jeremy and abinette up here right now playing the straight shot as well and drained it gets it to go and and almost drops to a knee with the fist pump there <laughs> shades of time there we go here we go jeremy in business and live update on the hole in one tracker there the total set for today at 13 and a half the over plus 110 and we currently sit at seven opportunity to make this one make the over betters feel a lot better here with another ace if we can get one to go down and again, a straight putt, but that's going to be it's short. Gonna be Just did not enough. have the speed. Might have had the line, but had had to have a little bit more speed there. Oh, oh, Brian. This is where you get into putter throwing territory, Rob. I'm just going to practice the stroke again. It, I mean, it's it's just really disappointing. Like, I mean, those are two strokes that he's left on the board here. Looking to knock that one down and he does. Gets out of this one a little bit cleaner than could have gotten there if he let that one get to his head, but you do see him with some frustration that he's expressing as you had mentioned, Rob, the highs can be high and the lows can be very low when it comes to Brian on, out on the course there and he's going through it all right now. 
Notice Brian's out there in the short sleeves today. Yes. Well, I, you think that's an intimidation factor? It's like a lineman in yeah. the NFL in the, in the cold. You don't wear sleeves. You lather yourself in Vaseline, but you don't wear sleeves. I don't know that Brian's lathered himself in Vaseline <laughs> before the events, but uh, <laughs> certainly the short sleeves. Uh, interesting choice with the win there in Myrtle Beach today. Hole number six, again, very inviting, very tempting to make an ace. Straight putt, curves right to left. Yeah. But if you go long here, which we did not see in the first group, but if you do go long and get stuck against that back wall, you are hopeless in terms of stance for your second shot. Gary and Rick Alessi have more experience on this course than I do, but other than that, I think I'm I'm better. I've, I've got more experience than the rest of them on this stage. I've been in Team USA overseas for the World Championship three different times. I've been playing at the national level since 2015. I've come close several times. I haven't quite won one, but very close. You say you have some similarities to these guys, but the odds the odds don't show that. What, how do you feel about being an underdog? Going into this it, it's a motivation for this, but it, it's hard to lie with the numbers. The last couple tournaments down here, this course, I have not scored well, but that's irrelevant. It's it's time for me to step up and actually play this course well. And again, it comes down. If I play my best, I'm gonna win. Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna see an nominate here with. Uh, his first shot of this hole after just coming off of what was an exhilarating hole in one on the last one. Gonna take a direct approach. And, He's gonna put it by and with this power. Is one of the challenges. Yeah. Because you, you don't have a great stance here, depending on where you are. And you can see the hand on the hip trying to evaluate. Yeah. And just look for putt. some relief, but it's just ugly when you can't have like your your proper stance. Uh, he's he's got a little bit of room there. He ended up in a in a decent spot. Lining up the putt to knock this one in for two. Oh, and just misses. Oh, yelling at the hole. That's the first I've seen of that. This group is exhilarating. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> this Last... feels this feels like I'm watching a WWE Survivor Series right now. <laughs> <laughs> you see the last group they're all fairly even keeled as it gets later in the round and they can realize sees things start to slip or slip away you saw some emotions come out these guys hole number one miss putt we're getting putter slams balls being bounced off the ground guys are upset and brian just brian. missed that one but that was a great putt it's a little a bit putt. of frustration after missing that one but smiling to himself knowing how close that was and a good opportunity to knock this one in for two, and he does. Apologies to all the children out there watching today for uh, for Brian and Jeremy on the course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, at least they don't have to listen to Kanish on the broadcast. There so we go. There's a bonus. Tim Talley up here, and uh, he's found something in his line there on the course. He's going to throw that aside. Smart play. Except he noticed how he bent over to do that instead of using I the back know of his wasting it, it's wasting energy. energy. That's the next. That's the next invention here on the WPL is a putter that clears things for you, just scoops things by. You need like a little miniature, oh. like a dustbuster, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At the end of your putter, hey, and a short putter. Shouldn't there, give these ideas out too. for free. Yeah, yeah. Scratch that one. To everyone at the. Pro League Network and the WPL. Please remove that from today's broadcast. We're going to be keeping that one for ourselves. Now, now we got a race here. Yes. For this, again, top three of today are going to a sudden death playoff. That will crown the winner for today. It's anybody's ball game for those two and three spots right now, including Kent Cranford and Gary Hester. Who knows what could happen here? On to hole seven. This is the most aceable hole on the course. But you do not want to be too aggressive here because if you go past the hole, out of bounds is in play. It's a double breaker putt. Goes left and then right. But you got to get it 
with that delicate touch because you blow it past the hole and this could be a blow up here for Brian Johnson. Very light. Very light touch there. Oh, and this is what happens. And it's halfway come up back the hill. A bit. But like you Not could see way. how he just tapped that yeah. and how far that flew. It was a very, very light approach there. Uh, and it just rips by the hole. So something that uh, Tim Talley is going to have to take into account as he lines up for the next Ooh. approach. And Ryan not happy with himself there. Seems like he caught wind of the camera at <laughs> yeah. the end there. Yeah, he went, well, let's clean that one up a little bit. Yes. Family's Image watching. Is important. Family's watching. Important. <laughs> Tim Talley, little tap, 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 tap a -roo. Go in your oh, hole. Oh, misses it left. Doesn't get there. Seems really hard to keep this one uh, short today. Now, what's interesting here is that they get the relief from the, the bottom of the slope. Right. Which is very different than the international rules. International rules, this would be spotted, if it were to go out of bounds at least, would be spotted at the top of the slope. Wow. But you get the relief at the bottom of the slope here. Oh, no. Tim's not going to be happy with that one as he misses that one just left of the cup. You know who just cracked a nice cold brew? That would be Dr. Kent Crawford, Cranford, excuse me, <laughs> back in the clubhouse right yes. now. Seeing what's happening out on course here. Gary Hester, Kent Cranford, these guys are fist bumping back there now. Oh, oh, there we go. He followed it right in the hole. He the followed it right in. Kevin Naw style there. Right there. Jeremy spoke in class today. <laughs> Well, there you go. After after that hole, we are now at uh, eight on our live hole in one tracker. So the over 13 and a half betters feeling a little bit better than about themselves after what we had seen through round one and Rob and I discussing. We're going to need a lot in this second group. And so far to this point, we've gotten them. But now as we head over to our feature hole on number eight here with the live odds set at 0 0.5, we've yet to get one. And Rob, you know what? You weren't afraid to lay the juice. Are you a little bit afraid now? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely scared. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm definitely scared. At this point, uh, you know, bias aside from the commentators, we're rooting for hole-in-ones here, yes. people. We're rooting for hole-in-ones. We need a hole-in-one here. But again, because of where we are and the way the leaderboard's shaping up, not a lot of hole-in-one opportunities on this course. No. I do think that this is a hole where we see these three putters especially go for it not play for a deuce here. So that's not to say they're going to make it, but I think we're going to see some aggression and it's going to make for an ultimate sweat on this hole. All right, well, let's go. Predictions here. Do we see one out of these three golfers? Do we see a hole in one? We, we gave the over 0.5 at the minus 230 because we had six. I'm curious where you're at now. We've seen three go through. None have gone in. Are you still thinking that we're going to see one here? So what I like about this hole is that you kind of got two chances, right? You can putt it. It's a downhill putt, yep. but... You could get it front door. If you miss the hole, you can use the roll back. behind yeah. on that hill to come back in the back door. I think we're going to see one here. In fact, I'm going to call my shot. I think we're going to see two here. Wow. All right. There you go. You've heard it here. You're going to see two here. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. And we're going to see Tim Talley take the first approach at it. I mean, a hole in one here, Rob, will uh, have us feeling pretty good about your what? prediction. I mean, we need at least one. <laughs> Let's call it out for what it is. All right. Tracking. Tracking. Got it. And the minus 230 cash is. Now, you're on the line. You got two golfers remaining. Can we get the two here? Can we get the two? Can we get the two? Bold prediction. I say they do it. I'm with you, Rob. I say they do it. A little late, but yeah. I'll join in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Easy to say they do it after you <laughs> yeah. see the first. And Abene drops that one down. Good line. Ooh. Oh, wow. Comes back. He's not going to have a tough, too tough of a look here to knock in for two, but. What a scorecard for an Abine. Some squares, some circles. We're still in the early going here. And you, wow. Oh, no. And we're going to get another just, square on the scorecard. I need to just not say things like that when these guys go up to step up for these putts. Great putt there to close that one out and get away from with that, but um, he's, he's riding the roller coaster. But given the fifth fist bump to Tim Talley there as they're approaching the Cape, Brian Johnson to come through on my prediction. I say he does it. We got one shot, one opportunity. 
sees everything you ever wanted, Rob. Can Brian do it? I say he does. Looks like it's going to come back in. Ooh! Steady Stroke Johnson nails it. He got it. Nails it. <laughs> and the he goes fist in. Bump. Steady Stroke Johnson. There we go. Cash the over 0 0.5 minus 230. For those of you who weren't afraid to lay the juice with us, we grabbed that one there on hole number eight, the feature hole, the live hole in one tracker up to 10 here now on the day. 13 and a half feels much more in range as we have it, it does. 10 holes remaining. And, and this is part of like the second group and, and chasing and trying to score as high as they can brings a lot more hole in ones into play. But that hole certainly great tee shots from everyone. We ended up getting two hole in ones there as we enter the cave. Now, remember, this cave hole, very interesting, Zach, in that the lefties have a big advantage. We saw all those left-handed putters there. Last time around, we saw Rick Alessi putt right-handed. Yep. Gary Hester, Kent Cran Cranford, excuse me, putting left-handed. Do we see putters go lefty here? I believe I've seen Brian Johnson putt lefty on practice courses before. Um, it, I, that big, brings in a big advantage. But yep. this is a challenging hole. You can ace it, but you can also put up a big score if you don't get that tee shot right. And this is one I feel like these these putters at this point where you're currently sitting at amongst the leaderboard, you're looking, thinking, I've got to get myself into the top three. And if I'm not going to be in that top three, I've got to do every single thing I can to stay within a wild card position. You look at the rest of your group here now, you're probably going to be looking at, hey, let's just not put up big scores, right? You're just, even if you could stay within there around even, you're going to be in a pretty good spot coming down the stretch. Yeah, I'm sure you know all these putters right now. I mean, we're only, we're still on the front nine here, entering into the cave on hole number nine, but all these putters know where they stand right now. And this is going to be like strategy evolving yeah. with every single hole based off of what other people are doing. Because right now your goal is just to finish in that top three, right? You get in that top three, you have a chance to win that sudden death playoff. So Get there. Don't do anything dumb. Don't take a big score. And ultimately, it starts right here as this is going to be our final hole of the front nine inside the cave with Jeremy putting left-handed to maximize his angle at the pin. How would you approach this one here, Rob? Are you taking left-handed putt? I am. I've putt in a cave before left-handed. It didn't work <laughs> out. But... Whatever you can do oh. to get yourself the best angle, unless you're a horrible lefty putter, but right. I think maybe a backhand approach for me. I would go from the left side, but yeah, the old pool cue approach possibly as well. Oh, down now, on the knees. Now, okay, now I, I do not on. believe that's legal tender <laughs> in the World Putting League, but when you're playing with your buddies on the course, yeah. Well, Navinet here looking to knock in for two. Great putt to close that one out. And he's really struggled with the deuce putts today. If an Abinit was a little bit more squeaky clean with these deuce putts, he'd be running away with it right now. Brian stepping up here left-handed. Looks a little bit like Bryson DeChambeau, the way that that putter stroke is uh, being held there. <laughs> yeah, little the shades, shades of Bryson <laughs> with the, the steady lock grip there. Yeah. Great putt, though. Yeah, great putt, putt. See, I need to get out with these guys before our golf season starts up here in Canada because, Rob, you've golfed with me. I can't putt to save my life. Mm, it's, a, it's real challenging. It's actually very hard to watch, Zach, to, yeah, to be yeah, honest with you. I, I can imagine. It's, it's hard, to hard to do. I couldn't imagine having to see it go down. So Three for three lefty putters on this hole. As Tim... That's tracking. Tim tallies wow. another ace, Rob. That that had some speed. That was going to be on the interstate if it didn't hit the hole. Right yeah. There. That one had some speed, but direct center of the cup, excuse me, 11 hole in ones. This group is just powering through at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, we came into this one with Tim close to the bottom of the leaderboard in terms of outright odds, plus 600, and yet you see him up there tied for second with Brian Johnson, who was plus 500, both sitting at even right now, one stroke ahead of Jeremy and Abinett. And this second group of the day here continues to just motor through and makes it feel like they're in a much more comfortable position than where even group one was currently was sitting at after the front nine. So going into the back nine here, Zach, 
holes 10 and 12 are the holes where you're looking for aces here. Everything else on the back nine is extremely challenging to, to get an ace. But 10 and 12 are where you're going to try to make up strokes. This hole in particular, some will play this from the left side, some will play it from the right side, just like the graphic shows you. The ball is going to go right to left, and then it's going to straighten out. But there's multiple ways to score on this hole. And it'll be interesting to see what happens here. But this is one where at about an 18%, Hole in one rate, you can attack. You can attack. Go after that deuce spot quickly here. Um, I believe we saw Gary Hester at plus hundred thousand there. Live odds to win this. Any chance you'd take a live flyer on that? Give me a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. What is it? Hundred thousand to one or plus hundred thousand? It was plus a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. I was it plus a hundred thousand. Yeah. Give okay, me plus yeah. hundred thousand on anything. More sense. I'm taking yeah. it. Yeah. Misses that putt just to the right there, but otherwise a pretty good approach. It looked like as soon as he hit it, he knew that it wasn't going in. That's just speculation on my part, but watching him immediately when he hit it, I think he thought it he didn't give it a good enough chance there. And well, he's walking to the bridge right now. Looks like reevaluating his life, honestly, the way he's looking, pondering something. That was not just a, what happened on that hole. That was how did I end up here yeah, type of look. I agree. Tim. Tally. Does Tim have the OG Woodbridge adidas pants on right now rob is that what i'm seeing those, out of him? Those, i think i own those adidas pants they're very comfortable i would definitely mini putt in those if yeah. that's what he's wearing that could also be a, a kappa or a puma type of track pant if i'm correct but it does look like the adidas standard track pants. i think you just auto automatic bid to the final round if he's wearing tearaways oh tearaways you know what though one of those stripes is thicker yeah not as not, not adidas no going to have to talk to Tim about those pants afterwards after he drains his deuce spot right there. That was a challenging one, by the way. Challenging one. I have noticed Tim has a little bit of oomph on those tee shots. Yeah. A lot past the hole so far. That could hurt him coming up here with some of these out-of-bounds holes that come into play. But so far, respectable showing from Tim Talley. Jeremy. Oh. oh. So Jeremy's going to have the most difficult putt of the three putters here in group number two to close this one out with a two. Uh, taking a look at his scorecard here and evaluating how he's going to approach this one as he does get some relief off the wall. Rob, what's going through his head here? I honestly don't know. I was just <laughs> looking at that WPL vest and thinking <laughs> I need one of those. Yes. Uh, honestly, he looked at his book there. So he, he he's... He has some sort of line that he thinks this is going to be on, and now it's just execute. And he did not. He and you know what? These will start to eat away at you. Yeah. You, you know, we're not professional putters, oh, God, Zach no. and myself. You know, by far we're not. But you miss, you start to miss these deuce putts, yeah. and it starts to get in your head. Every single time you stand over another deuce putt, you feel a little bit more pressure, a little bit more pressure, and... That's the fourth bogey for Jeremy and Abinett. He has two aces on this course today. Yeah. Just really extreme. Got to clean up those deuce putts. And each one he faces now going forwards, the pressure is just going to grow on him. Well, much like the doctor we saw in group one there, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, going up and down in terms of what his scorecard was looking like. It was uh, geometrically beautiful, as you might say, when you're going to look at what card like that with circles and squares everywhere, but not so great when you're going to take a look at the leaderboard. And here he is dropped down to tied with Kent at plus two. They're still managing to stay ahead of Gary Hester at plus three, but Tim Talley, Brian Johnson, Rick Alessi remain your top three as we head to hole number 11. Now, Alessi currently sitting in the clubhouse listening to the broadcast, listening back, you would hope. hearing Rob talk about what that ace was going to go down and how he's going to feel after, still shaking his fist. But uh, still, Brian and Tim here with an opportunity to catch him and a bunch of holes left to play. And remember, hole 11, disaster is in play here. Very, An ace is almost impossible, but disaster is in play. Playing for a short deuce spot. The absolute worst thing players can do is miss that tee shot right. So you're going to get one kick off this hill, another kick there, and that's well done. Very good. Very, very good That's approach. well done. 
Yep. He's going to walk up calmly, comfortably, wearing that ventilated hat he's got on. I need one of those as well. Mm. Strong stance. And he wide, it. very wide yeah. stance there. Yeah. Low to the ground. It's almost like he's playing a bunker shot with that putt right <laughs> Yeah, there. it was. Okay, actually, you know what? I have something on my mind here now as we watch him pick up that ball using the flip end of the club. Mm. Do you not think that that handle might affect how you're going to putt? Mm, the grip? Yeah. I would think they got it figured out by now. Feels like... I mean, uh, this isn't Tim Talley's first rodeo. I guess, I guess Man's yeah. been putting for 20 years plus. Um, an abnet here. And, and again, another deuce putt. He's going quick this time. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm not consulting the book. Wow. wow. Living on the edge. <laughs> yeah. Living on the edge. <laughs> Yes. Ryan Johnson up here. And ideally, you want your deuce putt to be a little bit closer than that. But again, this is just about avoiding the out of bounds as much as humanly possible. Gonna catch hill one, one, two. Oh, that'll roll out. And that's Pretty that's a job angle. well done. Yep. He'll be happy with that. It was a little bit concerning there. I'm not going to lie. As we watched that ball roll up onto the hill, I thought he might get into a Alessi territory when we saw him go OB. The only OB of the day, actually, uh, that we saw so far where Alessi did go up and out and kind of putting him in the position that he is where he's only sitting at minus one after that first round. But Brian Johnson does manage to make a great shot there, a great approach, and is able to knock it in for two. And we're going to be moving on to one of our featured holes here. Hole number 12, multi-shot hole, various starting positions. Some will use the rock, as we saw last time out. Some won't. I don't know if I like the rock approach. The, the whole idea of how you got to hit it, where you got to hit it to, the power that you got to get on it, it, it scares me a little bit. It's, don't, it's, it's not something I'm, a, I'm attempting, but yet again, I'm no pro. I, I personally, and again, not a professional here, but when I've been out with these guys on the course, I like to take bounces out of the equation as much as possible. I prefer to play for a straight putt. Yeah. But with the rock, you actually do have a little bit of a margin for error. If you miss slightly to the right, right. and you hit the middle of the rock, you can still get a good kick and bounce it into the hole here. So right. it's not a super dangerous shot altogether, but lots of things coming into play here. We already cashed the over on holes in one for this hole yeah. with our first threesome. So we got two out of three there. Yeah, This is one that you can make. And if you bet the under for total holes in one at 13 and a half, it's time to start sweating. Well, I believe our friend AD in the chat there was sweating himself on the overs, but as you're able to cash the over one and a half earlier on hole number 12, we cashed the over 0.5 on hole number eight. Now we're going to be looking at an opportunity to get closer and closer to that 13 and a half starting with the Nabine and he just just misses and and see he went for the straight line there and we saw the holes in one come off the rock that was a straight putt that he went with yeah I believe Gary Hester played the straight putt as well in the early going looks like Brian Johnson he lighting up from the left the side as well so certainly one of the more interesting holes in that it can be played in a variety of ways from a variety of starting positions. That's a rock Let's play. The rock. Nestles it up. There Gets we go. In. That'll take it to 12 hole-in-ones here on the day. You notice how quickly Brian moves to pick that ball out of the hole when it yeah. goes in? Guy <laughs> looks like doesn't. Usain Bolt out there <laughs> yeah. once, once he drains those. Yeah, and when it doesn't, he looks... Uh, Skyward, I would yeah. say. <laughs> well, here we go. Tim taking more of a approach from the right here. Is Kappa Tearaways. So this will be this will be a, off the rock. Oh no, opposite. Interesting. Have not seen that angle yet. Just gonna get almost goes out of bounds. Wow. Comes back for a pretty good rollback and a good opportunity to knock in for two as he does there. And we talked about it a lot. Tim has pace on those putts. That one rolled right up to the top of the hill there on the back. You see that gentleman in the back there wearing the suit and the glasses? I think he might have been from the men in black. Possibly. <laughs> Never know. He's going into the clubhouse and erasing the memory of Alessi so he doesn't have to rewatch that shot of him going OB over and over again. Or 
potentially Gary Hester might want the, the memory of today <laughs> erased as well. It, it's possible as we see Gary there on the leaderboard still in last place, but in Abinett and Cranford still sitting at plus two. It looks like this is going to be a race between Johnson and Tally to kind of see who can catch up to Alessi or potentially take over as Brian Johnson does time for first on the leaderboard at minus one as we head to 13 in this second group of the day. Tally, I mean, we were looking at him, Johnson, as these kind of lower end in terms of the odds for today's outright winner, but uh, they've proved to kind of learn from what happened in that first round, maybe learn from the conditions a little bit and apply that to their games as, as they've headed in into this round and um, had some success. I'm a big fan of this whole personally, Zach. This hole breaks severely from right to left, and it makes it really hard to go directly into the hole. So they're going to be looking to get a kick off of the back wall, yellow wall there. However, there is an out of bounds that comes into play if you miss too far left. But that's the type of shot. I'm there. wondering today if the wind might be holding that up a little bit. Right. Because we haven't seen the bounces coming off there, but good putt from Brian Johnson there. It's in for two, and he'll be happy with that as... He's going to stay at minus one on the day and right up there with Rick Alessi. As we see the hole in one tracker on screen 12, we are still looking for two more for those over betters at plus 110 to cash. That's going to be challenging yes. with what we have left here. That's going to be a real challenge. 13, 14, 15 here is, if we were going to make an Augusta comparison, would be like your amen corner, so to speak. These are very tough scoring holes. If we look at the averages on tour, 2.17, 2.17, 2.18, and holes in one less than 7% of the time on each of these holes. So this is one where these next three holes here, you just want to limit the mistakes. Obviously, you want to make a good tee shot and right. get it in the hole. But in a lot of cases, two is a great score on these holes. Well, Anabene is going to need to make up some ground here, and, and that's, that's what not happens. Do it. And that's what can happen. You miss left, and the out of bounds comes into play. So that's going to be a penalty stroke. But you have to try your best to miss on the right side of this hole because you go up that hill with speed, and you're in trouble. And now you're looking at a lengthy putt for a three. It's going to be a tough putt for a three here as an Abinet is currently sitting plus two and at the bottom of the leaderboard of this second group is referring to his notes here before he, he goes and attempts this putt. This is a pretty important one for him. You, you drop another stroke here and it's going to start to feel like, especially with how the other two guys in your group have been playing today, like this could be the end of the road for you in today's event. You think the rules official gets pissed off having to go out there and move the ball for a guy who's got the picker up on the end of his club? It's like, you're out here picking uh, your ball up. You don't bend down. I got to bend down? Never thought about that. <laughs> I would suggest you're reading a little bit too much into the situation, and no rules official has ever oh. thought that. Ooh, as we see, Jeremy miss again. So this is going to be a double here, and there's some extreme scores on this scorecard today for Jeremy and Abinet. And he 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 does the, the cutthroat symbol yeah. to the camera. I yeah. don't know if he's saying he's done or uh, he's done with somebody else. Maybe he's done with you, Zach. Yeah, he said whoever that guy is on the commentary. I've heard, I've heard just about enough. That's. He, he heard me say that this could be the end of his day and then drops one of those. And based on how they're going so far, this this might be a, you know what, we could take over. I, I think right now, because of the way that it's shaping up with, you, you have a two-stroke lead over number four. So yeah. Tim Talley's at even par. He's got a two-stroke lead over fourth. I think, as we see a pretty good tee shot there, they're playing not to make a mistake at this point. Right. Because at this point, it doesn't matter if you finish in first spot or if you finish in third spot. You're going to that sudden death playoff no matter what. So at this point, it's don't make the big mistake. And because of that, I think you might see the hole-in-one uh, overall score, which is set at 13.5. That might be in jeopardy right. of staying under 
because of the mindset of Brian Johnson and Tim Talley now, which is don't do too much. Let's get ourselves home. Jeremy and Abinett, that's a different story. He's got to make up a ton of ground at this point. Yeah. Be super aggressive. Looked like he was walking into traffic there. Be very <laughs> aggressive, but really close, uh, those cars on the side of the road there. It is, and as I've normally just pointed out in the chat there, there was bikers mm. on the street. Um, Will he get the kick? That's part of it. That's Almost. pretty good. Almost. Do you think there's part of an abinant right now that's wondering if he's going to get invited back to the next WPL event? No. No? I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's going through his head. I don't think that's going through his head. Okay. I think if what he's thinking about is probably a lot of the secondary putts he's had so right. far today, which right. have been, frankly, not very good. Hey, well, but we I'm knew this about checking. Jeremy going into this tournament, right? Like very wide range on his scores. He drains those second putts. He's killing it, but... Ooh, ooh, that was a bad kick. That, that was that. It looked like he was going. Like, that was the intent of where he was putting it. Obviously, the result doesn't go yeah. uh, how he would like, but that seemed like where he was trying to play it. Well, this is a very tight line. This hole, probably one of the tightest, if not the tightest, on the entire course. And and what they're playing for is a kick off of the back every single time. Usually, it pops up into the air, but. Brian's took a, a bad run out to the right there, but he nails his deuce putt. Somewhat picks up the ball angrily out of the hole there. Like he didn't deserve the fate of, of what that deuce putt ended up being, but still looking good here. Still looking like he's in position. Well, taking a look at the live leaderboard and nabbing it there now as well, sitting plus 100,000 uh, at this point. Hey, give me uh, 100,000 on anything. <laughs> And uh, Gary Hester, well, if you like plus 100,000, maybe 250,000 at plus three might be to your taste there, Rob. Uh, not really sure, but you want a flyer on someone, that could be the guy uh, as we do look at Alessi and Johnson still in the lead. And seeing that live updated leaderboard, plus 137 on Alessi, Ryan Johnson plus 175, Tim Talley plus 275. Obviously, we get to some longer odds in the final three. Is there anyone that you might try to find some value with or you do find some value with on the live leaderboard right now? Well, it's interesting because Brian Johnson and Rick Alessi came into this round with very, very similar odds to start. Uh, Rick Alessi would probably be favored amongst this group, but... Again, Brian's Brian's playing well. I mean, with the exception of that that rough start for him, yeah. he's really gotten it together. And I wonder if it's an advantage having to go into sudden death, having just been on the course, relative to having gone back to sit down and relax a little bit. So, I don't know. Brian Johnson, to me, stands out as the guy right now that could be the one to beat. As an abonnate there, now drops that one in. And for those wondering about the hole-in-one market, as we see it up on screen at 12, and we're seeing 13.5 was the total set on the day, the sudden death round does not count towards the hole-in-one tracker. So that will just come to a conclusion at the end of 18 here with this second group, and that will be the end of that. There will be no additional hole-in-ones added for the sudden death round. And a reminder to everyone watching this hole, this is nearly impossible to ace. Uh, I don't believe it's happened at the Masters or the U.S. Open the last couple times it's been played. This is a bank shot off the yellow. Get it curling around as close to the hole, hole as possible. Take your deuce and move on. Two is essentially a one on this hole. Right. Well, Tim Talley coming up, looking to close this one out. going to bring that one around that's and, a little light you yeah. kind of want it to get around a bit further dagwood's right across the street i can tell you right there been there many times had some late nights at dagwood's i'm not gonna lie to you rob i don't know what that is i will search it up right now just in case well let's just say it's a it's a go-to for some uh, some people on tour Okay. Nice little sports bar across the street in North okay. Myrtle Beach. Yep. Very, very nice people. Is this where you had the uh, pork chops? 
That's the a, infamous pork that, chops. That is a different place okay. down the road, which I, I would not be able to tell you what it is, but uh, $2 pork chops served at uh, between 4 and 6 o'clock every day. Great deal. <laughs> no free ads. No free ads as we head to hole number 16 here. Three holes left to play. And just an update on the leaderboard here and how this one works out. This is event number one of the preliminary or the event number one of the preliminary rounds here. We do have another one next Monday, March 4th, I believe that one would be. And the winner of that will also join the winner of today's event alongside two wildcard competitors in the finals on April 2nd to conclude this Survivor Series as part of the World Putting League. So today's outright winner out of the sudden death round will automatically advance. Then the outright winner of next week's sudden death round will automatically advance. And the two best scores after that, not including the sudden death rounds, will join them at the finals on April 2nd back in Myrtle Beach. I got to think next week's preliminary, the conditions would likely be a little bit easier than this. I mean, obviously it could be more windy, but today seems pretty windy in North Myrtle Beach. So you might see both wild cards come out of next week's group if it's a little bit easier to play. But who knows what the conditions will be like here as Brian Johnson steps up on number 16, making sure he's getting it up the hill and he's done it. And that's a great putt. Yeah. This is one of those where you got to make sure you get it up to the top or else it's coming right back. It's uphill 90% of the way. You you could see how it broke right to left. Yeah. But Brian's doing what he's got to do right now, which is just not make the mistake, and he'll find himself in the sudden death playoff. And Tim's got to do the exact same thing here. Just nestle it up next to the hole. Don't put it too far past and bring a big score into play. Don't keep it too short. Have it roll back down. Very interesting stance here on this hole as well. Seems as like almost nestled up against the wall, at least from this camera angle. Oh, and that's that's pacey. Yeah, and and you know this leaves a tough second. And I, as I mentioned with the first group today, the issue with this second is if you miss the hole, you could get it going all the way back down the hill. Yeah. Well, it's risk reward here, right? You, that gave him a great opportunity at the ace look, but on the other side, you're looking at now that little bit of a daunting putt back to kind of close that one out with a two, which he does there. So good for Tim, but it, it was that kind of scary moment. Now, Jeremy's going to try one. to go for the ace. He just left it short, but he's going to have to start making some aces here in order to bring himself back into. Over 13 and a half betters currently sitting at home snapping their own putters over their knees. That was the best look you're going to have for the remainder of yeah. the course at a hole in one. 17 is possible here, the gingerbread man. Yeah. This has a very steep incline. Players are trying to hit the back bricks here and get a deuce putt somewhere that's close to the hole, but every now and then it'll go in. The big mistake here would be to leave it short. And it just comes all the way down the hill, which we haven't seen happen yet today, but actually does happen way more frequently than you would think. It's a very delicate putt, uh, but opportunity for an ace here is roughly in the range of around 7%. Right. We did see the doctor in group one try to dial in his own operation and see if he could attempt an ace to get himself within striking distance of Rick Alessi coming out of that one, but unsuccessful. So, We'll see if we're able to get any aces to drop here. Tim Pract Talley up first. Practice stroke there was a strong one. You can you can see that he wants to make sure he gets it up the hill. Hits it hard. He does. Interesting. Did Given how hard he he uh, hit it and was lining up to hit it, it felt like there was a chance that that thing was going to fly up the hill and yeah, you continue can past see the hole. The incline is, is way more than it actually looks like. Yeah. Seething. Very wide stance again from Tim. Blast it right in the middle of the hole. Beautiful. Great, great deuce putt there. Tim's very consistent right now. He's locked in. See the men in black, man? His fist pump in there. You can see Gary Hester back out on the course. Yep. Men in black there, um, <laughs> I believe is Ted. That looks like Ted. Yes. Yeah, I, I did once rag on him for the uh, the polo shirt and 
laser look. Right. He likes to often go with, but it seems to work for him. It's not it's not a look that I'm all that familiar with, but it works really well for him. That's a that's a great putt right yeah. there by Jeremy. Unfortunately, he needs some aces here, but you know, if he was right in the mix here, he would be really happy with that effort. His tee shot there. So a bit of a a bit of a penguin stance, I would call it. Do you notice that? The outward flare of the feet? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's good good observation, actually. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> Very I call it like I see it, Zach. Yeah, yep. We appreciate that. The rules state you must play the ball as it lies. <laughs> that was hit hard. Uh, that's that that's that awkward middle range too right where it's you, you get it a little bit short on the front side where you don't leave it you don't give it enough now you give it a little bit too much on the back side but still yet again not enough exactly. to get that bounce back the other way you but, did see him consult the book there see the break of the putt i think it should be fairly straight based off of what we've previously seen and it said and it to is. go in center cup brian johnson very consistent now slight little fist pump I believe he said, who do you think you are, I am, as he strolled across that bridge right there, Brian Johnson, heading into hole number 18. And hole number 18 is just, again, you I cannot stress the difficulty of this tee shot enough. Yeah. You tee it up as close to the right border as possible. It breaks hard from left to right. Hard. Does it, It's counterintuitive to what you think. You, you'd stand there, it looks like, yeah, okay, maybe it's going to go right to left because of the way that the, the green is shaped but it actually goes left to right and out of bounds is in play on the right. If you hit it a little bit too hard, we saw all three putters in the first round. Keep this one, knock it short, very short. Um, I don't know if wind is a factor right now or whatever, but this is a very, very trickable, tricky putt. One of the most daunting on the entire course. See Rob, during the period of time that we've been fortunate enough to work with the WPL and the PLN here, there's not been many holes that I don't like. This is one of them for me. This is You're not, not a fan of this. this hole. Is, I'm not a fan of oh, it. Oh, I love holes like this. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I love watching them. Oh I, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I volcano holes get those out of my life forever. Well, you had one. a bit of a different experience. Yes. I had a much more enjoyable time watching that one. Right now, this has some speed. That's wow. a great putt. But you can see how, like a little bit more, and that can go out of bounds on the right. Very, very well done by Jeremy there. Yeah. See, the penguin does have right? the, the, the offset stance, stance. Yeah. yeah interesting it's what it's like a draw it, i i think yes. i think jeremy might golf and he's probably like plays a, a pretty hefty draw right based off of that stance so like i'd like to confirm that with him uh cards of 40 there jeremy not his finest round but respectable oh well done that was a uh Nerves crept in as it got up on the ridge. This there. is a tough one I mean, because Brian Johnson knows now. Like I just don't have to make a mistake here. You think the snowman on the hat is a bad omen? Uh, I'll tell you, I wouldn't be wearing a snowman. <laughs> I would not to a golf either. event. I wouldn't be. So I go the other way. Even if I don't get them, I try to manifest it. Anything yeah. that says you know under par, birdies, ace, whatever I can ace do. Ace of spades, right on the middle of the hat. Yeah, there you that's go. that's the that's the way I'm looking. Brian Johnson in with a 35, so he will definitely be one of the competitors in the sudden death playoff. And Tim looking to get himself there as well. What a putt! Excellent. Is it just short, which will not help those who bet the over 13 and a half, but it will help Tim advance on to the sudden death round here. Ooh, oh, wow. <laughs> a ring around the rosy right there. Look I, at that back nine for Tim. Very consistent. I mean, two under over his last 11 holes. Really solid showing from Tim Talley, even par after a rocky start. Missed a couple of those deuce putts, but ultimately gets the job done. Course played very, very, very challenging today. As you see, Ken Cr uh, Cranford congratulating everyone. But it's our sudden death. Rick Alessi, Brian Johnson, Tim Talley, and unfortunately, Kent Cranford, Gary Hester, Jeremy Abandon in Abinet. In Abinet. Paul apologies. It's a tongue twister for me every time. I will get it. Uh, they will unfortunately not make it to the sudden death round and are eliminated. 
from the World Putting League Survivor Series. Well, and now taking a look at this leaderboard and who remains, if you were someone who bet on this event outright ahead of time, you would have noticed Rick Alessi plus 375. Jeremy and Abin and obviously now eliminated our plus 1,000. That was someone we were looking at as, hey, maybe a long shot to take a chance on there in the second group. Doesn't get it done. But Brian Johnson plus 500 as well. Uh, we're going to be heading into this final round plus Tim Talley plus 600 here too. So a couple of the longer shot odds that were on the board available ahead of this event are the ones remaining. If you're going to break this down between these three golfers here, Rob, Again, we talk about sprint, not a marathon here in this type of event. You get in, you get out. It's two rounds, essentially, that you're playing if you get fortunate enough to make it to the sudden death. Between these three golfers, how do you kind of handicap this yourself and give the best shot to win here today? So this is truly anyone's game because, honestly, going into this event, Rick Alessi's average on this course was 34.6. Yep. Brian Johnson's was 35.3. Tim Talley's was 35.4. So these three putters are all within a stroke career average on this course. So it's anyone's game. I personally believe that Rick Alessi might be at a slight disadvantage having played earlier, right. had to go sit down, whereas Brian Johnson and Tim Talley might be a little bit more in the zone. Right now you see Brian Johnson as the odds on favorite at plus 140. I tend to agree with that, but it would be, I mean, you can make a really good case for any single one of these guys. Rick Alessi to me was the most poised competitor today very consistent with the exception of that double bogey where he kind of went off the rails with the out of bounds shot. I thought he played the best of anyone, but Brian Johnson, Tim Talley, having just come off the course, they're, they're in the zone right now. They're yeah. in the putting mode. They don't have to get it all back together and, and, and turn it on again. So anyone's game really. And we're seeing these odds move in real time with Rick Alessi getting some bets here right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't blame the people, but I, I, I give Brian Johnson a very, very slight edge right now. Yeah, and I mean, we're looking at this live leaderboard here. Rick Alessi plus 150, Brian Johnson plus 175, and Tim Talley there at plus 200. Heading into this sudden death round, Rob, we're looking at some golfers that we think might be able to close this one out. Some golfers whose odds we took some longer shots on ahead of time. I'm still going to continue to root for my guy, Rick Alessi. But as we head down to our sudden death round, we're going to go down to the course and hear from Josh to see what's going on live. Welcome back live here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with Brian Johnson. Group two was an impressive performance for you. Walk me through those first nine. Well, hole one, the wind picked up, so I gave it a little extra juice, and that's why I took the bogey because I was farther back along the, the back edge of the hump, so I didn't really know where that broke from there. Making hole three was was huge. Then a bad mistake on five. That was just all me making a mistake there. And, uh, making making eight and twelve, you know, twelve set the table and just was able to run through the back then. And you were showing some emotion, just like Jeremy and Navdin here. Did you feel like you kept your composure just enough? Yeah, well, absolutely. And I, it's it's more fun when you let the emotion out because you know it lets everybody know what your head's in and it, it just helps get out the nerves, helps get out, helps you regulate yourself because if you keep it in, you get adrenaline surges, then you start hitting the ball too hard, or if you're getting upset, same thing, you you can really start messing up your stroke. Okay, now back to Rob and Zach back in the studio. Let's take a look here at uh, the sudden death rules as we are getting to our final three golfers. The outright winner is obviously the one who goes on and gets a guaranteed spot in the finals. But looking at the Survivor Series rules, we're going to start on hole number one. Participants will see who will be the last one standing. The worst score on the hole will be eliminated. You win or tie the hole. You survive, as is in the theme of the Survivor Series, and you advance to the next hole. Very much a different kind of Correct. element here that we're going to see in this in this last round between these three golfers and how they're going to have to approach things. You don't want to be last on any given hole. What's the, kind of the mindset? What's the approach? And in your opinion, does this give any one of the golfers an advantage over the others now? I don't think any one of them has a specific edge, but I do think that the way that this course sets up right at the top, holes one, two, and three, yeah. makes it very interesting because on hole number one, you have a, an ace hole, one where each golfer is going to try to put the ball in the hole. Then you have hole number two, which is like you're not acing no matter what. Yeah. So it's like don't put up a big score in this situation. Then three, four, and five are all holes where you ace them about 15 to 20% of the time. So I, I don't know what the strategy is going to be here for each individual golfer. I will say I know Brian Johnson specifically is a more aggressive putter. 
and he will play to win all the time. I don't know that that's conducive to winning this type of event, especially when there's three putters all together. But this is like really evenly matched. And you see it reflected in the betting odds where I don't think there's a distinct advantage for either one of any of these guys. We did look at the over 13 and a half total aces on the day, plus 110, and it doesn't come through for us. So unfortunate situation for us there. But as we look at the order of how we're going to take place here in sudden death, Rick Alessi, first golfer, plus 150, Brian Johnson, second, plus 175. And finally, Tim Towley, plus 210 there. Live odds courtesy of Bet365, where you can bet pre and during today's event. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for how this sudden death is going to take shape. Very interesting market movement here because Brian Johnson opened the favorite for sudden death and now finds himself as an underdog. And, and the odds are kind of reverting to what they were pre-event where yeah. Rick Alessi had uh, you know shorter odds than Brian Johnson overall. Tim Talley, a bit of the long shot here, but again, just looking at his numbers relative to Alessi and Brian Johnson and his career on this course, his average is right there with both of these guys as well. His median score is a 34. So Tim Talley knows this course as well, and he'll be a fierce competitor overall. It really is anyone's game. It, it, it's, it's not for the sake of just hyping this up. I have no idea who's going to win. It's anyone's game at the moment. Well, we're going to see them start off here on hole number one here yet again and uh, cutting to Rick Alessi, who looks like he knocks that one in for two. So as we know, the lowest score, the worst score on each hole is going to be out uh, after the conclusion of the hole and Brian Johnson next up here. So basically Rick Alessi rooting against aces at this point. Two aces would eliminate Rick Alessi after he tapped in for his par. Brian gets through the hole. Wow. What a putt from Brian go. Johnson. Look how, look how quickly he got to that ball yeah, right there. Runs. He's right there. Picks it up, and now Rick Alessi is sweating because if Tim Talley aces this hole right now, it's we say goodbye Alessi. to Alessi. On a hole we hadn't seen an ace on all day. Talley steps up. Looks like he's nestled right up against that post there. it from the left side between the rocks it's on pace wow. that'll be the end of alessi's day it's One really unfortunate and and you know what down. that you know R rick is a is a fierce competitor and you see him fist bumping right there yeah. obviously that's got to hurt but both brian johnson tim talley came right off around got right back into it putting stroke is there and now it's just going to be them two going forwards as rick alessi unfortunately great performance but is not going to make it any further here in the sudden death playoff. He still cannot, he still can, excuse me, make it as a wild card. Yes. So his minus one round that he put in today will count. And right now he'll have a wild card spot. Correct. However, he's going to have to wait it out for next week's competitors. Well, and we did see money come in on Alessi ahead of that final in the live market and seem to be wrong as we're going to have here the two longer odds of the three that were going into the final round brian leading this one off and that's going to be, be a putt and you see he consults the book right away and does not look too happy here as this is a virtual coin flip right now at bet 365 both yeah. these golfers lined at minus 120. I mean, after seeing what Brian Johnson's left himself here with a deuce putt, don't hate the Tim to click in Tim Talley right now. No. Because this is a challenging one. And you know that this is going to be very much on his mind as he's going to have to knock this one in for two because that three, it really opens up the door for Talley to close this one out in two holes. Doesn't do it. And he lips out to the left. And this could be Tim Talley for the win if he can put this in in two or less shots. As uh, Brian has uh, launched, launched the golf ball <laughs> across the course at this point. I mean, I get the frustration. I really do. I really do. Here we go.
I mean, I'll tell you right now, with where we're at, this is started on a good line. Yes. It just dis- depends on the speed, because you want as short a deuce putt as possible for Tim Talley here. Well, I'm getting news here, Rob, that Tim Talley has just won the event. Uh, so as the estab- as the connection reestablishes itself here, as we can get it back up and get to the guys on the course, uh, Tim Talley has won the sudden death here, and. I cash my under five bets, and both of you suckers with your over four and a halfs are gone to waste. You know what? The the, the two aces on one was huge, yeah. but also the three here, which was unexpected for me yeah. from Brian Johnson. Uh, we saw that in his first round as well. Like the 18 holes that he played earlier, where in the early going, you just couldn't get it. And the weird thing about this is over the course of the day, it never felt like he was supremely in contention yeah. at any point. But the structure of the event is potentially conducive to one of these long shots coming in and snatching it up. So Tim Talley, uh, who is lined anywhere between 6-1 to one or 8-1, to one, depending on the sports book, comes through and takes it home. Well, and he just kind of hung around, right? He, he never let himself make a big enough mistake to let it things get away from him, let it, let things get out of hand and keeps him in the hunt, keeps him in the race. And despite how well Rick Alessi had played here today, my personal pick heading into the event, uh, when it comes down to it there, we saw a hole that no one had aced all day and two competitors in Brian Johnson and Tim Talley step up and knock those in and, Rick hadn't even played it poorly. He just goes in for a two, a short two at that. And Rob, I think some of what you had said of the fact that these guys were coming off of, they had just played, you're rolling right through to it. There was only a brief overlay between their round and the sudden death. That might have helped play a factor. Now you've seen hole one once, you've warmed up throughout the day, and the putter is hot, so you get things rolling. So it helps lead Tim Talley to a victory here today, but we're going to go down to the course and hear from Josh of what's going on live with the competitors. Winner of Episode 1 WPL Survivor Series, Mr. Tim Talley. How are you feeling? I feel great, Josh. It's a great feeling, great feeling. You, were you at all nervous about, you know, your first grouping with Jeremy and Brian Johnson? I mean, you had some early struggles, but you came through. Talk to me about it. Yeah, I wasn't nervous, no. Um, had a good grouping. I just hurt myself with two bad mistakes on just really not difficult deuce putts. Rushing, not taking my time. I usually have gotten where I try to, I don't care how long the putt is, look it over, take your time, and I just kind of rushed it and put myself too over, and I was like, man, I've you know, I'm not going to go and make the, you know, to the next level. And then I made those two aces in a row. And, you know, we did have an advantage. We knew what the first group shot. So I was like, okay, if I can just place even the rest of the way, I'll, I'll get to go to the sudden death. And I felt good about my chances there. Brian Johnson sinking an ace in the sudden death of hole one. Was there any pressure for you on that one? Well, of course there's pressure because, you know, if you miss it, it's over. But I, you know, I felt I was going to make it. Hit a good putt. It had tried to slip by, but it caught the lip. So, yeah. Before the sudden death, you were right here on the side with me, telling me, "This one is mine." Yeah. I don't know. I, I usually don't. I just know. I just had the feeling that I'm gonna win this. I'm gonna win it, and and it worked out that way. How do you carry this momentum going into April 2nd of the final? Well, that's a long break now, uh, but I'll be ready when the time comes. All I'll right. Be ready. I can't wait to play in it. All right, Mr. Tim Talley, congratulations. Thank you very Rob much. Rob and Zach, back to you. That'll do it for event number one here of the World Putting League Survivor Series taking place February 26th. We're going to go over to the second event coming up next Monday on March 4th there to see who goes on to face off against Tim Talley in the finals along with the wild cards of today's event and next week's event to take place in the finals on April 2nd. Rob, what an event today was. We talked about how today's event and the way that things were going to play out and the rules surrounding it were going to make up for a much different matchup than we had seen in events past. But uh, what did you make of what went down here today and how things played out? Yeah, I think it was fascinating. This is a testament to, you know, tough course and how hard it can be sometimes. The way that it played, we saw an unlikely winner in Tim Talley, but a very deserved winner. He kept it all together. We talked about it with his first round. He, he aced eight and nine 
in his first round. And then he went pars all the way out, very consistent throughout the day, did what he had to do. And I mean, he's handled the pressure as part of Team USA before conquering tournaments abroad. He finally did this back home at the Pineapple in the United States. Very well-deserved winner in Tim Talley, who will be in our finals in early April. That'll do it for today's coverage. We hope you enjoyed. For all things World Putting League, you can head over to the worldputtingleague.com as well. More events and coverage like this, you can head over to the Hammer HQ YouTube channel. Thanks for everyone who tuned in here today. For myself, Zach Phillips, my co-host here, Rob Pozzola, our on-course correspondent, and Josh Tapia, our in-studio producer, Jason Cooper, and all the amazing people over at the Pro League Network as well as the World Putting League. We thank you for your effort here today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday.